God bless you this evening. It's such an honor to be with you once again. Thanking God for all that he has done for us. And thank God for how you had a, a blessed week thus far. I know that many of you have gone through and are going through situations in your life. But we want you to know that God is still able, even right now, to help you to come through. Somebody said, you know, preacher, you just don't understand. But one thing I do know is that God is a joy giver. God is a peace giver. And God is our strength, even right now. Come on, let's go to God in prayer this evening and let me say this, if you have a question, you can send me a question and we'll do our best to answer it for you or a prayer request. You can go ahead and uh, email your prayer request because I believe and know without a shadow of a doubt that you serve a prayer answering God. He said to call on him in a time of trouble and he will, he will deliver Let's go to prayer. Father, we come to thank you today and we praise you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, just to gather one more time. Now, Lord, we look into you for guidance and for understanding. And we ask you now, Lord, to be with us in a special way. Touch, oh God, your people as they strengthen your people and help them, oh God, to maintain their faith in you. Now, Father, even right now, we pray, God, for our doctors, for the nurses. God, for all of those on, the, on our first line employees, God, those who are laboring to help us to stay safe. And Lord, bless us now. We ask it in the name of Jesus, and God, we are claiming it done, and we thank you for doing it. Thank God, and amen. Amen. Even though the governor has uh, somewhat allowed the, the state to come open and but I want you to yet maintain safe distance from one another. And wear your mask. And, amen. Listen. Even though it might be legal, but you got to use wisdom in what you're doing. So I want to encourage you today and this evening to take heed to yourself. Use wisdom in what you're doing. Just because it might be legal, don't make it right. So it's up to you to make the choice. Well, I, I was leaning on going back to the Beatitudes, but the Lord dropped this in my spirit, and I want to deal with this, and we'll probably get back to it a little bit later. But we're living in a time now when so many people are living with offense. But the, I, I, I want you to know that life is an offenseful place. And no matter how good you are, how long as you still exist on the earth, offenses is a must, and they will come. Offenses just, you know, does not happen. How can we, when they happen, they do happen. All of us at one time or another have suffered some type of offense. But how do you handle it? I want you to think about this because it's important. The way you handle offenses influence the end result of the offense, how you handle it. You may be an offense-free person, not offending anyone, but that does not exempt you from being offended by someone. 
And this is not, there's no offense-free world on this earth. Even God, the creator of all still, get offended by men. Because the Bible says, it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. God was grieved at his heart for what was being transpired. So since there is no offense free world, we need to live our life to the best ordained by God, full of peace. There's a need for us to how to understand how to deal with and handle offenses in life. So there's a question. And the question is, what is an offense? An offense is any act that brings annoyance, displeasure, or resentment. <laughs> Did you hear that? Annoyance, displeasure, or resentment. Another definition is a lack of politeness, a failure to show regard for others, wounding the feelings of others. And how many of y'all know all of us have done some things that have hurt, have wounded others. Some was intentional. Some was not intentional, but nevertheless, it hurt. Another definition is the state of being insulted or morally outraged. Now, Jesus in Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 54th verse, it says, and when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished, and said, whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother and James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus says unto them, a prophet have not honor, save his own country, in his own house. And he did not many works because of their unbelief. So when we look at this, the last definition is state of being insulted or morally outraged. We find that the people in Jesus' day were outraged by what he taught. And how many of y'all know we live in the day and hour now when people get offended over what is being taught based on what the Word of God says. But let me say this. We're living in a time now 
when we're going to have to learn how to handle offenses. And they're going to come. Every offense not properly handled will give room for enmity. And many times open doors for the devil. Whether you know the offenses are door openers for enmity. And enmity can be described as an expressed feeling of hatred and dislike. Saul Who was the king? He was offended because of the way people hailed David from the day and from the date he sought to kill him. The people said Saul had killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. And that, 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 that thing began to eat at him to the point that he wanted to go out and kill David. Some of you the same way right now. There's some eating at you, bothering you. But yet, you won't let it go. Saul didn't let it go. He wouldn't let it go. And that's the way the enemy is working. He wants to keep you bound up, tired of, and tangled up. Thought about Abraham. You know, him and Lot, they were together. But there came a conflict between Lot and Abraham. Now, 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 Abraham says to Lot, look, we, 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 we don't need to just keep on going like this and war against one another. So let's separate. And they did. Lot, he chose what looked good. But there came a time, now, there came a time when uh, Lot was taken captive. When they went and invaded Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot was taken captive. Now, Abraham when he heard what had happened to Lot, he could have been like a lot of us today, said that's good for him. He deserved that. A lot of times we say that, don't we? We deserve, he de they, 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 they deserve that. But you know what? He handled it in a different kind of way. He went got his great his men together and they went and rescued Lot. And so and so how we handle things is important. And offenses can close heavens upon the offended when not properly handled. When you are offended, when you are offended, how many of y'all have been offended? How many of y'all, can you be honest and say, you know, preacher, that's me. That's me. But do you not know that when you are offended and you refuse to release, you're positioning yourself 
to a closed heaven. When you are offended, now let me tell you one thing. Offense is going to come. If you are saved, if you have accepted Christ in your life, guess what? Don't never think that because you have accepted Christ in your life, the offense is not going to come. Things are happening. Life is full of trouble. Some of you right now, you're saying, Pastor, I, 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 just, I, 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 I just can't believe that my family members treated me this way. Some of you have gone out of your way to help somebody. But yet, they turned on you. They hurt you. And I want to let you know one thing. Offenses are wrong. So also is refusing to release the offender. That's not right either. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, uh, in verse 23, it says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou remember it that thy brother has an ought against thee. You heard what it says. When you come to bring your gift and you remember it, that there's something going on between you and your brother. <laughs> Jesus says, now I know this is hard right here. This seems to be difficult. But Jesus says, leave there thy gift at the altar and go thy way. In other words, don't present your sacrifice. But go back and be reconciled to that brother. Now, now you know, prior to something else. And I, I admit that we, sometimes we just don't want to, or we don't, want, we don't like confrontation. We want things to go smooth. Everything's not going to be smooth. And everything is not going to go like you want it to go. But you go back and say it and be reconciled to that brother. Your brother now, that, that's somebody that's supposed to be close to you. Now, I, I found out I, I got some brothers and sisters, blood, who hurt me. But you know what? I got to be big enough to let them know you hurt me. You offended me, but I will forgive you. And, and, and that's what it's all about. Now, Jesus says to be reconciled to thy brother. He didn't say your enemy. He said your brother. And after you go back and get it, get it right, it's something about taking time to get something right. Be reconciled. Come back together. You know, I've heard this saying, and feed them out of a long-handled spoon. Y'all heard that? I don't believe that's what God intended. 
God wants us to be with the oneness. God is not in division. God is not, he's not that away. And then he says to be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and offer thy gift. Then he says, agree with thine adversary quickly. While thou art in the way with him. Now, I, I began to think about this. When trouble comes, and trouble will come. You have trouble on your job. You have trouble in your home. And let me tell you one thing. We have trouble in the church. Because whether you know it or not, the trouble, the same trouble that's in the home is going to be come to the church. Because guess what? We're family. And just because we with one another does not mean that we're not going to hurt one another. So he says, agree with an adversary quickly. Whilst thou art in the way with him, let at any time the adversary, the adversary, now we all got an adversary. The enemy is against us. But I want to let you know one thing. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm so glad that we serve a God that love us in spite of what we do. And you got to understand something. There is always a price to pay for every offense when it's not handled properly. That's the price. Come on. Jesus says in Luke the 17th chapter he says then said he unto his disciples it is impossible that offenses will come or oh, they're going to come Sometimes, when they come, it, hurt, it hurts. I mean, you've been really hurt. Been hurt on the job. Been hurt by your family. Even in the church, you've been hurt. Now, I, I want you to know it. We might as well be honest. We got to know how to deal with it. And but prolonged offenses when do birth bitterness. And bitterness, when not curbed, leads to wickedness. Now, some of you might say, well, pastor, that's just the way it is. But bitterness is rooted in offenses. You cannot be bitter and expect to be better. Let me, can I tell you all this? Bitterness strengthens sickness. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, 
verse 15. says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And thereby many are defiled. That's any root, you know, something can happen. And it, can, it don't have to be nothing big. It can be something small, real small. And if you don't deal with it, it will take root and it begin to grow. I, 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 in my yard, sometimes I look around and I see pecan, little pecan trees growing. Now, if you don't go out there and pull it up by the root, you let it stay there. I don't care how much you try to pull on it, it's going to be harder to get up. The same thing about this. If you don't deal with the offense, if you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you. James 3 and 14 says, but if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, let me tell y'all one thing. God looks at the heart. God knows our heart. God knows my heart. God knows your heart. But he said, James says, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart. Now, we, we can put on a good show. We can walk around and smile at one another. And have bitterness in our heart. You know, let me, can I be transparent? There was a time, there was a time when I hated my father. And, 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 and I would go home. And I would laugh and talk with my dad. But down inside of me, down inside of me was a bitter feeling. And I was professing salvation. But yet, down inside of me, I know somebody said, well, huh. that's not me. Well, I was like that. But God began to deal with me, and I went back home. Let me tell you, I had to get it right. And I went back home, and I said, Dad, I need to talk to you. I said, for years, I've hated you. He looked at me and he said, what did I do? And I began to tell him why I hated you. And then I said, but today I'm asking you to forgive me for the way I felt. He didn't know it, but God knew. God knew what's in your heart. Men look on the outward appearance, but God looks at your heart.
James says, but if ye have bitter anything and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This is the day now we're living in now. This is reality. Offenses are real. And we can, we can put on a good act. But I'm going to let you know we're living in time now when we got to get real. Deal with what's bothering you. Now, your ability to properly handle offenses is a test of your spiritual growth and maturity. I want you to think about that now. And if you're easily offended at all times and at everything, it's a sign that you're not growing as a Christian. It's time to stop being childish. Well, I, you know, if you as, as a believer, you find it difficult to let go of fences, you might likely not make it to heaven. Matthew 6 and 14. He says, For if you forgive men that trespass, for if, if you forgive me in that trespasses. Now, if is a conditional word. If, if, I know some of y'all say, you know what, I, 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 I can't do that. It hurt me too much, and so I, I, I can't do that. But Jesus said, but if ye forgive men that trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want nothing to keep me out of heaven. Can, can I be honest with you and you be honest with yourself? Every last one of us have sinned. Come on. Some of, even when we were professing salvation, we have sinned. And God, you know, I, I preached this message on Sunday. about charging to me. Jesus says to his father, yes, they have offended you. Yes, they've done you wrong. Yes, they have. But that's the reason I, I, I came, I died, I gave my life that they might be forgiven. Paul, 2 Corinthians 2 and 10, he says, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. 
But verse 11 says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. He said, but we're not ignorant of his devices. The devil is raging today. He's doing everything he can to get or to keep you from being with the oneness. Yes, things are happening now. Offense is going to come. But Peter says, 1 Peter 3 and 9 says, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are therefore unto, that ye are thereto called, that you should be, should inherit a blessing. Let me, let me, let me, let, let me, let, let me stop here because I'm going to pick this up another day, but there's not one of us here that have not been offended some kind of way. Yes, the hurt is real. Some of you have, have shed tears. I've had to shed some tears too. But one thing I realized that we serve a God that cares about us. And he's able to help us and to bring us out of any and every situation. As I close for today, I'm going to pick it up again next week. But I want you to know something. That love is powerful. I said love is powerful. Jesus, the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Oh, yes, we've all, we've all messed up, but thank God for God loving us. And can I tell you all this today? There's nothing you can do to stop God from loving you. You might be an alcoholic drug addict, prostitute. I don't care what you, what you are. God loves you. Not only that, but he's there to help you. He wants to deliver you. Somebody right now, you, 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 you feel that spirit of bitterness. You feel that resentment. But I want you, I'm asking you today to turn it loose. Let it go. 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 And come to God. He told you to cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. I want to pray right now. First of all, I want you to know something that you'll love today. God is a merciful God. His grace and mercy is there for you right now. Father, right now, there are so many, God, that's been offended. Bitterness, envy, and strife have taken hold of them even right now. God, on the inside, On the outside, they're smiling, but on the inside, they're crying. They're feeling this thing, God. But I pray right now that Satan not come against your power. I adjourn you by the power of the living God to loose your hold. Take your hands off right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I claim deliverance right now in Jesus' name. 
God, even that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, oh God, that this thing has got them to the point that God, they're almost on the verge of suicide, but I take authority over it right now in Jesus' name. Touch right now, God. Touch right now. I ask it in Jesus' name. And God, I claim it. Now, thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name. Thank God. And amen. Oh, my friend, I'm believing God for you right now. I'm praying, I'm thanking God for your deliverance, for your healing, for the joy that you're going to receive. Receive it now. All right? Well, God bless you. God keep you. Listen, listen, listen. We'll be back on Sunday morning. Tune in Sunday morning. As you know, Sunday is Mother's Day. We thank God for all of our mothers. Thank God for what he's doing for mothers. But one day soon, one day soon, we're going to be back. Amen. We're going to all come together. Lift our hands and give God praise. But this evening, I want you to know that you are loved. And we are praying just for you. God bless you. God keep you. Here's our prayer. I want to send a gift to you. I want to send this book entitled Found God's Will. And I believe that this book is going to be a blessing to you. We all want to know what God's will is. So I want to encourage you today to get this book. I'm going to send it to you free and postpaid. All you have to do is inbox me. And this book will be put in the mail. We're living in a time now when we need to know what the will of God is. And I believe that this book will help you in your daily devotional, in your daily walk with God. So if you desire this book, inbox me right now. And I will send this book to you free and postpaid.